This is the second section of chapter 12 on differentiation and this section is about finding the derivative. So first of all, what is a derivative? Well, the derivative is a function that gives us the exact value of the gradient at any point. In the last section, we were estimating the gradient or working it out by actually drawing a tangent and using those coordinates, but there is a way of actually working out exactly. Now, remember from the last section, what we found was we were looking at finding the gradient of that chord. And as that chord got shorter and shorter, as that point P got closer to A, we got a better and better estimate. And this is what the um, derivative is based on. The idea of a chord where it gets shorter and shorter and shorter and that chord, uh, the one end of the chord gets closer and closer and closer to the point where we want to find the gradient. So here's a diagram basically showing what's going on. We want to find a gradient at this point here. And then we've got this point here a little bit further along the curve. So we've got a chord and we want to bring this point closer and closer and closer to make this chord shorter and shorter and shorter to get a better and better estimate for the gradient at this point. And we're going to do it in such a way so that this actual distance tends towards zero it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller and that will tell us what the gradient is exactly and this idea of getting closer to zero comes up a lot in mathematics and in this particular area um, it's called calculus so this chapter and the next chapter are called calculus and it's all based on this idea of looking at something and seeing what happens as we end up getting closer and closer to zero what's the pattern so how does this all work well let's say we've got a graph here and i want to find the gradient at a particular point let's say i want to work out what the gradient of the graph is here at this x value okay well for that x value i'm going to have a particular y value and further along the curve i'm going to have another x value that's a little bit bigger than my previous next value and I'm going to call it that gap between these two h so this x value is going to be x plus h so this gap here between these two is a gap of h now another way of writing the y coordinate here is to write it as f of x so that means that this y coordinate here I can write as f of x plus h. I'm taking the x coordinate and I'm putting it into the function to get the y coordinate. So what's the gradient? How would I work out the gradient? Well, I'd work out the change in the y coordinates divided by the change in the x coordinates. So let's do that. So let's just write down gradient. Um, it's not exactly equal to, but let's just write down the second y coordinate minus the first over the second x coordinate x plus h minus the first now let's have a look at this this bottom part can be simplified because you've got x plus h minus uh, x so you just end up with f of x plus h minus f of x so y2 minus y1 and then we're just left with h at the bottom now we need some sort of notation for this gradient and we use this the function with a little dash here this is what we call the gradient function this is the notation that we use and the way that we say this we say f dash of x so when we're talking about the gradient we use this notation here so this is how we're going to find the gradient now we said before we want this gap to be as small as possible now how do we make this gap small well we make this gap small and how do we make that small by making h small we want h basically almost to become zero we want it to tend to zero and the way that we write that is this we write limit and then underneath h arrow zero now what does this mean 
this means the limit what do you end up going to as h tends toward zero now we don't actually want h to become zero because then this doesn't make any sense you can't divide by zero we basically want it to go towards zero and then when it's really really close to zero we can see what the pattern is what's the pattern as this chord gets smaller and smaller and smaller so if we put this all together we have the gradient function the way that we find the gradient is equal to the limit as h tends to zero of this f of x plus h minus f of x over h so basically what does this become as h tends towards zero now for different functions we can put this in here and work it out and when we do that this process is called differentiating from first principles so if you've asked to differentiate from first principles this is what we start with now it may seem a little bit complex at first but once you've practiced a few you'll find it's actually pretty straightforward and this process allows us for any function once we know what the function is to work out what its gradient function is example two the point a with coordinates 416 lies on a curve with equation y equals x squared at point a the curve has gradient g part a show that g equals the limit as h tends to 0 8 plus h now any question that asks you to do something like this or says differentiate from first principles this is what you use and this is also in the formula book okay so what this question is basically saying is okay at the x coordinate 4 which is also the y coordinate of 16 what's the gradient is it this okay and it says that we're using g instead of f dash of x right so we write it out as we see it here the limit as h tends to zero of f of x plus h now what's x x is four so four plus h minus f of x and the x coordinate is four so we're working out what the gradient is at x equals four divided by h so let's put that there okay now the, the rest of this is sort of purely algebra really but we need to make sure that we use the right notation so g equals the limit as h tends to zero so we always write that down now this basically says the x coordinate is um, 4 plus h and f of 4 plus h is the y coordinate how, now how do we find the y coordinate we take the x coordinate and we square it so we're going to take this and square it so this is the y coordinate this is like our y2 so um, 4 plus h all squared is the y coordinate like our y2 minus y1 well if the x coordinate is 4 what's the y coordinate well it's here it's 16 you could also put it in here to find it out so it's 16 divided by h now we expand the brackets here so that's going to be g equals the limit as h tends to 0 and this when we multiply the brackets is going to be 16 plus h 8h plus h squared minus 16 all over h now what i can see here is that these are going to cancel out the 16 and the minus 16 now what does that leave g equals the limit as h tends to zero of 8 h plus h squared over h now we can cancel out the h's here what you don't do is to make h equal to zero and that will give us g equals the limit as h tends to zero of 8 plus h uh, which is what we've got there so let's just move that down a bit i don't need to write anything at the bottom the limit of 8 plus h so we've proved as required so i'll just put as required here 
And then the last bit of this question, part B, asks us to deduce the value of G. Well, what happens? Well, we're looking at what happens is H tends to zero. So as this tends to zero, you can have a H uh, eight plus a tiny, tiny number. What does this tend towards? Well, the, basically it's going to become eight, isn't it? As this gets really, really small, then we can almost forget about it. So uh, G equals H or eight. So we can write it like this, as H tends towards zero, eight plus H tends towards eight. So there we are, we're de deducing the value of G. Example three, proof from first principles that the derivative of X cubed is three X squared. So here's our first principles formula, which is in the formula book. So this is what we're going to use. So the first thing I'm going to do is to say, let F of X equal X cubed. So the derivative F dash of X is equal to the limit as H tends to zero. Then we get to this part here. Now what this means is what's the Y coordinate when the X coordinate is X plus H? Well, that will be um, this cubed. Yeah, the way that you get the y coordinate, let's write it down here. The y coordinate is the x coordinate cube, and the x coordinate can be anything you like. So here the x coordinate is x plus h. So the y coordinate is going to be x plus h cubed minus, well, this x coordinate is x, so the y coordinate is x cubed. So minus x cubed all over h. So that's step number one. Okay, step number two, so we still write down this limit h tends towards zero, so you must always write that down, is to expand these brackets and simplify it. So we need to do x plus h times x plus h first. So that will give us x squared plus 2xh plus x h squared. Now you could, if you wanted to, you could use the binomial expansion on this, but since as as it's only three brackets, by the time you've done that, um, you might as well have just expanded it manually. So now let's expand these brackets, the third one. So that'd be x cubed plus x squared h plus, now we're going to multiply this and this, 2x squared h, 2x squared h plus 2xh squared plus Next term is going to be hx h squared or h squared x and then plus h cubed. Now does this simplify? Yeah, we got x cubed, then we got x squared h plus 2x squared h makes 3x squared h. Then we've got 2x h squared plus h x squared gives us 3 x h squared or 3 h squared x make it better that way around 3 h squared x and then plus h cubed so that's what's going to go at the top so x cubed plus 3 x squared h plus 3 h squared x plus h cubed minus x cubed that's the x cubed that was there already and then all of that divided by h so before we move on, what we need to do is to see whether this can be, if there's anything that simplifies, well, yeah, the x cubed is going to go. And also, we're going to divide everything by h because every term up here has got an h in it. So we can divide everything by h and that will just leave us with the following 3x squared plus 3hx plus h squared. Now what are we doing? We're still looking at what happens as h tends towards zero. Well, this will be unaffected. Here we'll end up doing three times, something really close to zero times by 8x. So this literally just disappears. And this will disappear. Any term that has a h in it, we can uh, pretty much say it's going to end up being 
uh, zero, so we can almost like ignore it. And that's as h tends to zero, so we'll just left, be left with three x squared. Three x squared. So we write this as h tends towards zero, then three x squared plus three h x plus h squared tends towards three x squared. So that would be the derivative of x cubed. Now we'll be looking at this later on, but basically what this does, this 3x squared, gives us the gradient of the x cubed graph at any point. You just put an x coordinate in here and you'll get the gradient. So if I was looking at the x cubed graph and I had a value of x as one, if I put one into here, it will tell me the gradient. So at x equals one, the gradient will be three, three times one squared. You should now be able to do exercise 12b on pages 261 to 262 of the textbook.